Hey everybody, uh, in this tutorial I just wanted to go through some uh, common issues I think people face when trying to create uh, custom components in an Ionic application. Uh, specifically this is around uh, how to import uh, components uh, correctly, where you need to import them, because uh, a lot of the time people will run into errors saying that uh, the component can't be found or it doesn't exist uh, in Angular, that kind of thing. So we're going to just run through an example and I'll do I guess all the common mistakes that people make along the way and then how to fix those. So just to start with, I have an application uh, I've started here. It's just a blank application that has two pages that just link to each other. And so I'm going to create a new component now and it's not going to do much. It'll just display whatever the default uh, text is in the component. And we'll just try to get that set up and working correctly. So I'm just going to run Ionic G component and we'll put that into a components folder. I should probably give it a name too. Um, I'll just call this uh, example, I guess, example component, and uh, that works. Okay, so that uh, generates our component for us. So now we'll have this components folder. And just for anybody who doesn't know, by the way, uh, when you create a component, you can also specify a uh, folder path here. Uh, so rather than just creating, I could just say Ionic G component example, and that would uh, create the component in just the default app folder uh, by saying components forward slash example, uh, it'll add it to this uh, components folder here. Okay, so if we just have a quick look at that component, uh, again, it's just got the default uh, sort of text here, it just says example works, and there's nothing really going on here, it doesn't really matter. Um, the point is we have a custom component here and we want to add it to our application. So by running that command, if we look in the uh, app.module.ts file, the root module for our application, you'll see that automatically gets added to as an import to this root module file. And you can also see that it gets added as a uh, declaration here. Now what this means and what you would probably assume it means is that this makes it available to use in our application. Uh, but there is a uh, problem with that which we're going to see in a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the home page here and we're just going to try and use this component. So if we look at the selector for this component, it's app example. So we should be able to just come into our, uh, our home page here and just add app example and I'll save that. And now I'm just going to serve the application. I'm just going to run Ionic serve and we'll take a look at what's happening. Okay, so the application is being served now. And as you can see in the console here, we have an error. And it says app example is not a known element. Uh, if app example is an Angular component, then verify that it is part of this module. And so basically the application thinks we're trying to use something that doesn't exist. And this is probably the first thing people run across that is confusing because you probably think, well, I created the component through the command line, it got added to the root module file, why can't I access it here? And that's because uh, by default, Ionic applications use lazy loading and each of the pages you use uh, has its own module file uh, that gets lazy loaded. So if you weren't using lazy loading, as we are, if we take a look at the app routing module, you can see we're using this load children property, which lazy loads these various pages. If you weren't using that, then you wouldn't have to worry about this. It would just work. But since we are using lazy loading and each of our pages have their own module files, we actually need to add the component directly to that module file. So instead of adding it into the root module file, we're going to cut that out of here and we're going to add it into the home module file instead. So I'll add that import back. I'll have to change the path there to go up one folder. And I'll add that back to the declarations. Okay, so I'll save that and we'll jump back into the browser again. And you can see that it works now. We have example works popping up, no errors uh, in the console anymore. And so that's fine. If you only want to use this component in one page, then you don't really need to do anything else, but there is still uh, additional things you need to be concerned about because let's say for example I wanted to use the same component in the detail page which is, is you know a common sort of use case usually if you uh, create a custom component you're probably going to want to use it in multiple places a lot of the time 
So again, you might think, well, no problem. We'll just, you know, we imported it into the home module. We'll just also import that into the detail module. So again, I'll just add that as a declaration there. We'll save it, jump back into the browser again. And we can see it's still displaying there. Example works. Click on the detail page to view it on there. And now we get a new error. And this one says error type example component is part of the declarations of two modules, home page, uh, home page module and detail page module. And so what you might gather from this error is that basically it means we can't add the same component as a declaration to two separate modules. And so this is getting, I guess, pretty awkward because we'll, of course we want to use it in multiple modules. Why can't we do that? And you can, you just need to do something a little bit different. And so if you do want to use a custom component in multiple modules, you need to create some kind of shared module that rather than uh, declaring the component in the module, you import the shared module uh, into your other modules. So if we look at uh, the module files as they stand now, if we look at these imports, you see we have common module, forms module, ionic module. And if you look at the detail module, you'll see those same imports there. And so what the ionic module does is that's importing all of the ionic components. Uh, this is importing the form related stuff from Angular. Uh, this is some generic Angular components that are being imported. So these, module, uh, these modules being imported here are doing exactly what we want to do. We want to import our own custom components and we want to import them in multiple different modules. So we need to create our own shared module just like the ionic module or like the common module or the forms module or any other module. So what we're going to do now then is we're going to get rid of example component from there. We're going to get rid of example component from the home module as well. And we're going to create a shared components module. So under components here, we're going to create a components.module.ts file. And we're just going to have this file uh, basically set up all of the custom components we want to use. So I'm just going to add the, the basics here and I'd recommend just copying and pasting this in because um, I always forget the exact syntax I need to write anyway. So um, basically what you need to do is just import uh, ng module from Angular, Angular core. And you're going to create a new ng module and that is going to have a declarations and an exports. And then we're just going to export a class called uh, components module. And so the basic idea here is that we want to import any custom components we want to uh, use. And we're going to import them here and add them as a declaration and an export. Now uh, there is a much larger uh, discussion, I guess, here as to the best way to do this. Uh, and there is multiple ways you can go about this. So I'm talking about just having a single shared components module, which is fine. Uh, and the idea of this is that you put every single custom component you have in your application into this file and you import that into your various modules. Uh, the downside of this is maybe you have a lot of uh, components, for example, and you might not want to import every single component where, where you might just want to use, say, one component out of the, maybe you have 50 components um, that you have in total. So it can be a bit inefficient to just have a single shared components module. Uh, so you instead might want to break it up into multiple different modules. You could group them by the type of uh, component they are, or maybe you just want to have a module for every single custom component you have. Uh, just like we do with the pages here, for example, every one of our pages has its own module file. You could also have it so that your uh, custom com components also each have their own module file. So you could have an example uh, .module.ts file. Um, but in general, I think just for, you know, especially with the beginner glasses on, I guess it's probably the easiest way is just to create the single shared components module and import that way you need it. So what we need to do here is we need to import that uh, custom component that we created. So that was example component from, well, definitely not from there. Thank you, autocomplete. Uh, we want to go up. Um, Oh, we don't want to go up actually, it's just straight into example and then example.component. And then we want to add that as a declaration and an export. 
And now that we have this uh, shared module, this components module, we just need to import it into any module where we want to use that example component. Uh, the important part being it's no longer a declaration, uh, we'll be adding it as an import. So if I just import components module from components forward slash components.module, and I copy that to put into the other module file. And we'll just add the components module as an import down here. And then we'll jump over to the home page uh, module, add that same import, add it to the imports down here. Save that. And now if we jump back into uh, the browser here, hopefully everything should work now. So we have the home page here it says example works. So it's still working on the home page. Click the detail page and uh, we can access uh, the component. We haven't actually used it, we're just importing it. So let's double check that all works by actually referencing it in here. Uh, what was it again? App example, I think was the name. So we'll save that. And you can see now it says example works. Go back to the home page. Uh, example works. So now we have the same uh, component and we can use it across multiple different uh, pages or modules. And if we had additional pages and modules we want to use that in, we could also just again import it and add it as an import into that module. So I think uh, it is a little bit confusing overall, especially, uh, especially if you don't really have a solid understanding of how modules work. And also especially since uh, by default it gets added to this uh, root module file which won't work with the lazy loading approach so I think that trips a lot of people up and also the error around not being able to import it into multiple modules uh, I guess it's just not entirely intuitive how this works uh, but once you do have this sort of basic understanding uh, you should be able to do whatever you need with custom components and setting uh, setting them up however you need so I uh, hope you enjoyed this video uh, if you did like it please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.